Hey guys, NJ here, and we're having a look today at the Full Speed RC Leader 120, and this is another micro quad. These are coming thick and fast. Now, they're really becoming a thing, and the one that really put them on the map for me was the uh, Eosheen Lizard. Now, you'll know I did I did quite a few videos on that guy, and certainly some, some freestyle videos, and it freestyles like a beast. I was super impressed at how well that thing handled. And uh, yeah, here's, here's just another alternative. And you know, what does this one bring to the table? Well, it's actually 120 uh, millimeters for a start. So it's a little bit bigger and it's actually running bigger props instead of the two inch props, which is, tends to be this kind of uh, class. This is actually running 2.7 inch uh, tri-blades and they're, they're pretty beefy props. So I was quite interested to see why they went for that decision over going for the standard two inch. Um, but we'll come back to that a little bit later. Um, the camera is pretty typical of one of these CMOS cameras that we get on, on these things. I mean, they're not as bad as they used to be. When we go back to things like the QX95 and um, you know quads like that, the, the CMOS was just horrific, terrible um, wide dynamic uh, range light handling it was just it was awful it just didn't have any um, whereas these new CMOS cameras are actually pretty respectable like you can fly with them in challenging light situations with high contrast and it seems to do quite a good job it's still not as great as uh, having a proper CCD camera though I will say this this does look to be about the right size um, for one of these and this is a Runcam Micro Swift 2 which is a really nice board camera that um, will give us a picture that we're much more uh, used to on our bigger 5 inch quads and that guy will fit in there just nicely so I will definitely be fitting this to this um, at some point in the near future as I start to mess around and upgrade this thing. Um, what else does it come with? Well this one actually comes with a 2S battery which is 500 milliamps 50 c so nice and light. Interesting that they've gone with the bigger quad for a 2S instead of a 3S but again we'll come back to that. Um, it comes with a pretty typical kind of standard 25 milliwatt. There's no 100 milliwatt option on this, it is just 25 milliwatt, though I find in most cases that's absolutely fine. It's a dipole antenna, I actually prefer this to one of those flimsy uh, cloveleaf style antennas that are fragile as hell. Really, I don't even notice the difference these days. If you've got a good diversity uh, goggle or box goggle, diversity receiver at that end, you, to be honest with you, you'll barely notice the difference um, flying fairly close range with the standard dipole, so I much prefer that, it's way more robust doesn't come with a receiver so I fitted an XM Plus in there which you can see I've put the aerials out here at 90, 90 degrees to each other as you very well should. It has an F3 um, flight controller which is an omnibus F3 target and it comes with um, OSD built in which is always very welcome and pretty much becoming the standard these days so that's really cool you can tune your PIDs and all that kind of stuff straight from the OSD. There is a 20 amp speed controller in there which is D-Shot 600 ready straight out of the box so that's really nice and this one came flashed with Betaflight 317 but um, the first thing I did which I always do with all my quads is put it on the latest greatest so it's currently on RC5 even though, even though I think RC6 has been released of Betaflight 3.2. Um, the carbon seems pretty decent, it's quite a thick plate, it looks to be about 2mm. Um, let's just take a quick look at that shall we, if we make sure the calipers are zeroed. Oh, it's 3mm, wow, that's thicker than I thought it was. Okay, so we've actually got 3mm base plate. So yeah, that's quite a good thing, it does feel very stiff, I'm not entirely certain it needs to be that thick, but hey, you know, it seems to work, we'll see how that compares uh, in weight a little later. Now, even though you can see that we have an XT30 on here, that was my doing, it came um, with a, a, one of those stupid little JST connectors, which I just hate, they're awful connectors, they're long, they're not very good for high current, um, it's just, if you're ordering one of these, please order yourself a set of XT30s as well. Um, I've changed it over on the battery and all my other batteries that I have um, down in this class are running XT30s so it's a much better idea. Um, that was probably the only major complaint but it's kind of cool it's got a little bit of an obsession frame style look to it you know I, I quite like that. Um, you've got some little TPU uh, standoffs down at the bottom at either, either end which you can see there and there um, which are then fixed in with one screw which kind of holds the whole thing down and then these frames also go into slots uh, in the carbon and it all feels really rigid and solid I've got no real complaints 
about the uh, about the design there. Um, it does come with a nice strong 5 volt buzzer on the back which has one LED that just sort of goes off with it so no strip LED like you do get on the Lizard. Um, but this is uh, this is a little bit cheaper than the Lizard I think actually so it comes in um, here at the minute uh, sort of the 90 pound mark 90 British pounds um, so yeah it's it's pretty competitive I will say that the soldering seems pretty decent um, it's not amazing soldering but it's certainly not bad soldering I was quite pleased to see that that was was done nicely you get some velcro to mount to the bottom and obviously to your battery you get another set of props and it comes in a very straightforward box and you get nothing else you get no no kind of manuals or anything so you have to hunt for those bits and pieces I'm afraid so on to how this thing flies now what I found was on the stand and a 2S, which is a very light battery, it actually flew pretty pretty nicely. It was a nice flight, it was a nice flight experience, some very light acro, everything was good, um, and it was quite surprising. I thought, yeah, this 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 feels pretty good. What I did find, however, is that if you're if you fly like me and you're a bit of a freestyle stick banger, you know, top throw, bottom throw, top throw, if, if that's the kind of style you fly. The lizard's completely happy doing that. Um, whereas this guy, as I suspected, these props really drew way too many amps. I mean, even from a full battery with the throttle jammed, you would just sag it straight down to battery low. Um, and it really is down to the fact that I think these props are over propping these motors. What they've done, they've taken the KV up but I think that was a mistake. 6,000 kV for this quad would have been absolutely fine. It would have been a far better idea to do something with the stator instead of an 1104, uh, an 1105 or six. I think that would have been a far better idea and give you, you know, that extra torque uh, for running bigger props than to just jam the KV up. All that extra KV's done is meant that we're, we're pulling more amps and that, that really didn't work for me. So although, you know, the initial punch is there and I thought, wow, this thing really shifts, it soon just pulled the battery voltage down. And, you know, this is meant to be a 50C. I mean, I tried my 45C3S on there as well and it, it was even worse because we've gone up um, by another 3.7 volts. We've also taken the overall RPM up and I found that it was, you know, that, that low battery warning was going off even more. Um, and although it flew great and I really enjoyed it, I, I just came to that conclusion. This is overpropped on these particular props. They're too big for that, uh, for that stator. Um, so I think, I don't necessarily think the motors are a bad choice. I just think the props are a bad choice. So let me bring the lizard into view. You can see, um, you can see that it's got a bigger stance than the lizard so you can see that slightly wider out and the arms are a little thicker as well um, but yeah look at the prop size difference so you've got these quite skinny um, quad blade two inch gem fan props which you know these are my favorite two inch props these are these perform really really well um, and then you can see here we've got a really quite um, quite large uh, fat blade that you know is a, it is a tapered a little bit at the end but it's you know it's pretty thick um, it's at a pretty, you know, a pretty steep angle as well. I'd say, you know, these are probably 45s. Um, there's nothing written on the blade or any information to give me the picture of the blade that I can see. Um, but yeah, at 2.6 um, and the same state size as these, I just think it's not really working. So here's what I think I'm going to do. I'm going to put a set of these props on here. You know, don't write this guy off yet. It does fly great. And you'll see this from the footage. It flies great. It's just, we've got to sort this, this amp draw problem out. So I'm going to put a set of these on and then we'll go back out with this guy and see how it does. And I think then once we put it on some really solid 3S packs like, you know, this guy here, which is one that I've run on the Lizard and this is a 550 uh, 70C 3S. So you can see it's, you know, a considerably bigger pack, but the Lizard had no problem running with this. And I, I really don't think this guy will either. Um, so with a decent battery, I think it's going to be, it's going to take it to that next level where it really is um, certainly on par, maybe even better uh, than the Lizard. So we'll see. Anyway, let's uh, let's take some weight and just see what we get here. So the Lizard, let's wait for that to settle. There we go. So the Lizard, as it is right now, is 67 grams. So that's it, the way it is right now. And then if I pop this guy on, we are 70 grams. So that only enforces to me that really, 
with the, the, these props are wrong, with the other props on, I reckon this is going to perform great. And I certainly prefer the layout and the look of this and the construction. I feel like it's going to be a lot more solid. I mean, I've already dinged this antenna up despite the protection. One of these side bits here is cracked. I mean, it looks great, but it's not the best layout and design, if you ask me. I think this will be a lot better. Um, you can adjust the angle, you can see, which is really nice. That's super easy to do. Um, but yeah, as I said, the kind of big thing for me is the fact that we can fit a run cam onto there, that micro swift. So I think that will, will suddenly take this into being perhaps my new favorite. On the whole, I think this is a great quad. We just need to put the correct props on it. Um, I will revisit this, so uh, keep an eye on the channel. I'll be doing that at some point uh, next week, hopefully. Uh, but for now, that's where we are. Okay, guys, hope you enjoyed that. See you in the next one.